member of the Redmond Athletic Club for over 10 years and one of the things I learned in that decade was that when most guys go to the gym they just want to plug in their music, zone everybody out and complete their workout without interruption, without social time. Now for someone like me who's a people person that's actually a little bit discouraging. I like talking with people. I like learning from what they're doing, seeing their workout and going up to them and asking now what is the benefit of that particular method or what are you training for? What are your goals? I'd also love to have a regular workout partner. I've never had one in the past and I still don't have one to this day. But in those past 10 years, I have started to recognize familiar faces, other guys who have attended for year upon year upon year. And we have started to at least become acquaintances. We do share some information. We exchange greetings. When we see each other, we say goodbye when we're leaving. That's kind of cool. Um, so what you're about to see is something that is kind of 10 years in the making. There is a guy who uh, first helped spot me on one of my exercises in 2011. And he and I have both been regular attendees at the gym. Sometimes we go for months without seeing each other and sometimes we go for months seeing each other every day. Um, and I noticed over the years that his workouts are long and intense. He is strong, he is built. Um, and so I approached him earlier in 2020 saying, can I get you on the channel? Uh, on the video series and uh, I suggested that for this particular video, for this episode, what I would do is simply follow his workout. Whatever was on his list to do, I would do it too. Now, if that meant lowering the weights so that I could complete it, that's fine because he is stronger than me. I can tell just by the workouts he does. Um, but he said, yeah, let's do it. And so that's what you're about to see. Um, I have already completed the workout. I'm narrating this to you after it's done and I can tell you um, it was one of the most brutal that I've ever gone through uh, compare, uh, or since, uh, since working out with Mark Prickett. Uh, Mark Prickett was the last one to give me a workout that uh, was this brutal or more. Um, which is good for me. It was kind of kind of shook me up from my powerlifting thing, a little bit of a break from just the same routine week after week. Um, Normally, I would have the guest on and we'd do a little talk beforehand about uh, who that person is, why they're working out, what are their goals, what are their methods. Um, because of his job, he has reasons for not really talking about his personal life. So we are going to leave that out. Just know that uh, you are now about to watch what is, for me, one of the top most epic workouts I've had in 10 years. And uh, uh, the guy helping me is a wealth of knowledge, um, I have learned a lot from him over the years, little bit by little bit, and tonight um, I learned a lot and I suffered a lot. He pushed hard, which is good for me. So here we go, the epic workout of November 13th, 2020. In the spirit of doing whatever Jay was doing, since it was back day for him, that's what I did. Uh, there was no discussion, really. I don't even remember what workout I would have been doing on my rotation. I simply said, great, let's do it. And so we started there with the T-bar row. There is a machine for doing this particular move, but uh, Jay likes to do the one where you uh, uh, stick a barbell in one end of that hinge there and just work from there. And you can see from the, uh, in fact, I think you can see it from this shot. Yeah, I tried to do the amount he was doing and there was there was no doing it. So I brought it down a little bit. You can see in some of these shots, he is definitely uh, pulling up 
quite a bit of weight there, and I am not. What's he got here? He's got 135, and he makes it look easy. And that's five plates. Five times 45, 182. I, I'm, I'm trying to trying to do math and commentate at the same time. <laughs> On a side note, when I started editing this episode and I saw some of this footage, I was very encouraged. Uh, I, I look at that shoulder there, I look at, at this shot, where you can see the difference, the separation between the shoulder muscles and the arm muscles. You can see in that lighting, you can see some clear shadow. Um, it's just, the, it's one of those moments that, that provides the energy to keep going, to go to the next workout and say, yes, something is happening. For the rest of the workout, I will not spend as much time on each individual exercise as I did on the T-bar row, but I wanted to show, or, or at least give a hint of how much work Jay does in any one workout. And so I think we did six sets of the T-bar rows, and he does six sets of a lot of his exercises. I normally do four at most, maybe three, but uh, uh, yeah, he really packs it in. As I said in the intro, he spends a lot of time at the gym. Sometimes he will be there when I arrive and he'll still be working out when I leave. Uh, the bent over dumbbell row, uh, another good exercise for highlighting the, the latissimus dorsi muscles, getting them working, getting them stronger and bigger. Um, and you, of course you have to do one arm at a time. There really isn't a very good way to work both sides. And then we moved on to a deadlift. I'm calling it the upper deadlift because it, it was not about going all the way from the floor, although we're pretty close to the floor there. That uh, support bar is, is pretty low. I don't remember at this point if I asked him why we weren't just coming from the floor, but uh, anyway, there it is. It's definitely good for strengthening the lower back, getting your overall deadlift a lot stronger as well. And then we moved on to the upright row, and that is an exercise I haven't done for a while because in powerlifting you're not as concerned with it. It is more of a shaping exercise. It is more for creating shoulders that look good. Um, it wouldn't hurt a powerlifter because any exercise, any resistance exercise is going to strengthen your muscle fibers and any strengthening you do, I can't imagine, would, would, would do anything but benefit. Uh, your power lift so but as you can see here I this is another moment where I paused because I just that's an encouraging shadow that's again that's that's uh, that's a that's a video clip that has me going okay okay all this time at the gym is not just me spinning my wheels we are moving forward and then we moved on to a uh, this is not this up it's a kind of pull down um, I guess we'll, we'll call it a close grip pull down by the time I'm done editing this. Um, and you can see there he had some things to say about my, uh, my doing it right. There are exercises that you really have to think about. You have to tell your mind, work this muscle, not that one. You have to focus. And I discovered years ago when working out with another guy, Mark Ambern, um, that sometimes having that that uh, workout partner or that trainer come up and actually touch the muscle that you should be focusing on um, should help. It's called, what's it called? Pinning. Pinning the muscle that, that you want to focus on. And now we're over on the hammer strength machine. The, I, what does that say in small print? The isolateral low row. And so this would be targeting uh, a different angle for the latissimus dorsi, different part of the back. Uh, the back is an interesting muscle group because unlike something like the biceps where it's one obvious muscle, the back is made up of a bunch of different muscles. So if you really want it to look good, you do have to 
perform <laughs> multiple exercises that make the back work in a variety of different ways. And I guess variety and different was redundant. Moving on to the overhead press or the military press, Jay opted for the Smith machine to accomplish these. Um, the Smith machine reduces some of the risk of performing an exercise wrong, but at the same time, it eliminates some of the additional muscle tension that you need, some of the stabilizing strength that you would develop. So it, it has its pros and its cons, like anything in the gym, I suppose. It's one tool out of many, and if you work it into a full rotation, um, it's a useful tool. And now Jay introduced a superset, which is basically going from one exercise to another as part of one set. Basically, uh, uh, it should be considered a non-stop action. You don't give the muscles time to rest. So we start with the wide grip pull down and then went directly over to the uh, hammer strength shrugs. On a side note here, as a filmmaker, I'm actually kind of impressed by uh, Jay's follow there. That was a very, <laughs> that was a very smooth tracking shot. He kind of cuts off my head a couple of times here, but uh, I'll I'll work with him on his uh, on his video production skills in the future. Unfortunately, most gyms, including the Redmond Athletic Club, play music over speakers uh, to fill the room with noise, and that means that if I try to use the raw audio. Online platforms like YouTube will hear that music and then they will uh, they will give the video a copyright offense uh, notice. They will give it a copyright strike or, or, or they will actually try to put ads on the video to compensate for my, quote, using copyrighted music, end quote, even though I, I'm not really using it. It's just kind of there in the room. What it means is I... I am not free to use just the raw audio because I don't want copyright notices or advertising on my videos. Um, it means I have to either take the audio out entirely or mask it with other music from my music library, which is unfortunate because in videos like this, I'd love to be able to include um, not only just the, the live audio of the two of us working it out hard, but, but also the things that... Um, the things that the person I'm working out with, in this case Jay, say along the way, the, the training advice they offer along the way. Um, the only way to do that without violating copyright in the finer points of the law is to interview them before or after or get voiceover. Oh well, it is what it is. We finished out the workout with a little bit of emphasis on the abdomen and again that shoulder. I'm just I know, it's, it's one muscle out of many, and, and I have other muscles you can't even see yet, but that's just encouraging. We started the abdomen section with weighted crunches or cable crunches, and the nice thing about those is you can adjust the resistance. Those can be as hard or as uh, easy, as lenient of a workout as you need just by adjusting the weight. And if you watch the clips there, you can see I was not quite doing as much as Jay did, but I think... Uh, the difference here is not quite as, as extreme as way back at the T-Bar Rose, where I was doing a, a third to a quarter of what he was lifting. And then leg lifts or knee ups or there, there's, there's so many names that people call these particular things. Uh, knee raises. Um, when I'm done editing this, I will pick something to put on the, on the caption there. I, I was doing mine a little differently than his, I see now in the video. Um, 
And I started getting this rocking motion that was hard to conquer. But, oh well. Either way, the abs got a good burn by the time we were done. The face that says, I know, Jay, sometime in the future I will thank you for this workout, but right now, I hate you. And so that was my epic workout with Jay. After 10 years of both of us going to the same gym, we finally had one workout together. And he did suggest, somewhere in that workout, he phrased it something like, um, if, if you let me train you for three months, you'll be a beast. I don't know if that was an actual invitation, or, or just something he said, uh, but I may talk to him about that and see if somewhere in 2021 he wants to uh, uh, hammer on a, a, a protege for a few months and, and see what kind, of, uh, so what kind of assistance he can lend in my, my transformation. Uh, but it was a good time. It was a good workout. I said at the beginning in the, the commentary I made in the locker room on November 13th that I learned a lot that night. And in thinking back on it, I don't think I learned anything new, but I was certainly reminded by him of what a really good, solid workout is and the fact that I I need to step up my own. Um, I've probably been getting a little bit lazy, even though I've been going. I probably need to include more sets, push myself harder, uh, and and not not give in so easily to, okay, I'm done, I'm tired, I'm going home. Um, and the final thing I'll say is about the title of this episode. It's called The Last Blast. And just so nobody's concerned, Brian, are, are you done? Is this, are, are you giving up after two years? No, that was our last opportunity, mine and Jay's, to, to do this workout together before our governor closed the gyms again in mid-November. So for the rest of November and then all through December, uh, there was no going to the Redmond Athletic Club she gave she gave like a week's warning. So that's why I approached him and said, you know, the gyms are closing again. Do you want to do this now? And he said, yes. So there it is. Good times were had by all. Um, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, of course, make sure you reach out to me. And thanks to Jay for uh, humoring me, being on, being on video. I know it's not his favorite thing, but uh, uh, I enjoyed it. And I hope it was inspirational for you as well. <laughs>